Carl, thanks for joining me on today's Spotlight. So it's Carl Baxter from Stud. Carl, over to you. Introduce us to your business, please. So, well, it's a, a long and complicated route, Andy. Um, Stun, <laughs> Stun, originally, we, well, we date back to 1996, 1997, early days of the, 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 well, the very early days of the modern internet, back when it was still the Wild West. So we uh, we came out of that time as a, as started more as a, I guess, design ad agency, Um modern internet started happening my background was creative and design my business partner was more of a programming background and um, back in those days things either looked great and didn't do anything or they worked and looked awful and um, our thing was always well why not both and yep. so we we set up a, a, a business that that tried to manage both creative and technical hand in hand yeah and um we started working with some fairly large local midlands businesses like national express group um so we looked after all of the uh midland metro when that first launched and mm -hmm. trap west midlands websites and and what have you which sort of took us into more enterprise work and more sort of bespoke -y kind of work and that's where we ended up staying you fast forward to 2024 and um we're still largely doing what we did before now it's called it's called ux user experience and um and customer experience and various other grandiose titles but essentially what we're doing is we're still trying to develop quite complex software that yeah. is easy for the end user to use and mostly these days we do that in in financial services alongside stun there's a we have another business that we own which is an e-commerce incubator so we have um well we've got three brands over there one is an affiliate marketing website mm -hmm. one is a traditional e-commerce uh, business consumer reseller so we we resell other other people's products import it's actually toys we import a lot of stuff from scandinavia and, and europe and sell it in the uk and uh, the third one is a direct consumer brand, which we're responsible for the manufacturing of as well. So, so that sits alongside Stun. Uh, two things: it gives us a revenue stream, but the main thing that it does for us is it allows us to put our money where our mouth is when it comes to e-commerce. And we've got the three sort of main categories of of, of modern e-com all sat in house that right. we can experiment with in our own right. So it sounds like the business has been pretty diverse, a long and windy road to here, Carl. Um, what would be your ideal client now? I mean, you've talked about financial services. Just expand on that a little bit for me, if you don't mind. And maybe any other sectors that you would serve. Sure. sure. So I, I think the uh, the business is kind of at a point of pivot at the moment. So we, we've talked about financial services. We do, we do a lot of work in insurance and um that work we've created a, a platform that allows us to build quite complex enterprise systems quite quickly so your equivalent might be something like sap um yep. where you effectively you've got the the guts of what's there and then there's a yeah. configuration so ideal customer on that side on the financial services side would be insurance brokers of a of a size and scale but don't need to be massive anymore because of that uh Yep. that that basis outside of that in the general bespoke work we um really we work across the board so we work across manufacturing we work in mass transit in you okay. know, retail in professional services but i think really um in terms of the general business where we come in is where platforms fall off digitally so if you've got a right. um if you've got a business issue that you can't buy your way out of off the shelf or you, you, you're fighting in the margins of an off the shelf system, yeah. then that's where we tend to come in either to bring more systems together or alternatively to write something. So you've not got a reliance on something that isn't working inside your business. So um, generally on, on, on that side of things, it would be medium to large enterprise. Yeah, would, would would be 
normal for us. Yep. Yep. Okay. I don't think that's be not because we're only accessible to those businesses, but I think they're the kind of businesses that need the kind of things that we do. Yeah. Okay. Pretty clear. Thank you. So what would you say differentiates you from your competition? That's an interesting one as well. I think, uh, again, it's because the, the the diversity of the business itself, and maybe if I if I focus down on the on the insurance side, it's probably going to be going to be easier. So, um, within the financial services space, it's, it's such a heavily regulated environment um, that most of the focus when it comes to digital tends to be on back office and on making sure that compliance is there and the regulatory environment's correct and yeah. back office automation to, to 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 free up time. So we do a lot of that kind of work, but we bring it back into the front end as well. So there's that e-commerce experience and retail experience and user experience. We we bring that back to the fore and try and get our customers thinking about their end users as much as we do about the the internals. I suppose from a competition perspective, um, most of our competitors are the, are, are the big guys, the big consulting groups, your Cap Gemini's, your Boston Consultings, your Accentures, and we're not at that size or scale, but we have been through all the third-party vendor management exercises and the, the, the compliance and governance and uh, yeah. regulatory frameworks that we need to be need to have gone through to to work with these kind of uh, organizations so i guess that makes us the maverick we're the um we're i guess we're the wild card in in that space um because we can work maybe a little bit more entrepreneurially with a little bit less structure and a bit more agility um, okay. a little bit more like an in-house team so i think that's probably that's probably main point of differentiation for us yeah so the fact that we can we can do the big stuff smaller and the fact that we're more concerned about the end user. Great. Thank you. So here we are. What's the aspirations for the business for the next five years then, would you say? Well, to, again, touching on that pivot, we're um, we're in a really quite an exciting time at the moment with, with, with the business. Um, mm -hmm. My partner and I are probably more tightly involved than uh than a, than, a, than a coach might like to hear at, at the moment um but i think because of this pivot we feel like we need the the intimacy with all aspects of the of the business so we're working very hard at the moment um deep inside the software deep inside customer requirements deep inside sales process deep inside pricing you know the whole the whole set of uh the whole gamut of of um business processes we're, we're we're quite heavily involved in um aspirations for that certainly over the next probably actually more like three years than five years is to really get the sales process solidified and get as much of the onboarding processes and project and program management processes systemized as as we can so that can become I guess we, we we can provide training manuals for it. We can provide documentation for it, and we can provide training for it to to take ourselves away from the coal face a little bit, and and give that business the opportunity to to scale. Um, one of the really exciting things about this pivot for us actually is that we've always been a projects business. So, um, fortunately, we've been more feast than famine. Um, but there hasn't been the recurring revenues that some other businesses will will enjoy. We've not really been uh, afforded that luxury. So if we can develop scale on the financial services side of the business, because there's a licensing model behind it, um, we can quite quickly get to a, a, a point where the, where, the, where the business is into a, a position of profitability without the professional services element of what we do so that licensing element um will cover cost and if that's covering costs in and of itself it then really gives us the opportunity to invest inside the business on 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 product development and give us huge flexibility to to just to just to be the best that we can possibly be um because the um 
the external work just just it basically just becomes bonus cash um which obviously helps everyone you know i'm not i'm not being flippant about about that but if we if we can drive a business where the recurring revenues and those predictable revenues the licensed revenues are covering the cost of that business that business can be an amazing business and that's really what we're looking to do great thank you so next point then what would you say your biggest learning has been since you've been a business owner in this journey of 27 28 years that's quite a challenge one i think the biggest I think the biggest learning actually is that that moment of realization that even if you feel like you're a nine out of 10, you can't be a 27 out of 30. If you're a nine out of 10 in three areas, you're a 21 out of 30 if you're trying to do all three of them. And I think the sooner that you accept that and try and limit yourself as far as possible to your strengths and your leadership, then the sooner you're a happy business owner. That's pretty succinct. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Great. So over to the biggest challenge then. What's been the biggest challenge you've uh, encountered and how did you overcome it? Um, we've had the same challenge a few times, actually, Andy. This, this is a really interesting question for me because um, the, the real challenge for us has always been our industry is a barometer industry. So we've always needed diversification of the client base. So for instance, you know, if you niche down into travel and COVID happens, no one's traveling, nobody's booking accommodation, you're the, you, you know, you're the first one to go. However, if you're working in travel and healthcare in a in a COVID situation, you've got those tipping points there so so we've always had the challenge of being a barometer business and it's you know over a few over a few issues so you go back to credit crunch was was the first really major one we were working with a couple of really quite large enterprises um they were struggling because of the state of the capital markets and the state of the financial markets and therefore everything's getting reined in we were too small either too small a business or too few large clients that that we we were hit really really hard by that and you know involving restructuring and uh, we were we were fortunate we, we never we never lost our people and we never lost our our customers but we very nearly lost our livelihoods and houses were on the line and you know all of that mm. all all of that stuff um and then of course the same thing happened with with covid yeah um the COVID challenge was slightly different because we were a bit better prepared because we'd been through it with the we'd been through it with the the credit sure. crunch and so some of the mistakes that we made first time round, um, you know, not paying yourself and or you know those kind of things that you you're doing from a place of of goodness and kindness and uh, and from a moral standing, but you've you then allowing a business that can't function in and of itself to continue functioning by being supported by individuals, which is, yeah. which can't be done. So, you know, this time we, we've always been a sort of a debt free business. We've never, run, we've never run on credit. Um, but when COVID came round, I instantly shored up the balance sheet we we used the financing and the funding that was available and we we put an extra six months behind us to give us the time and the breathing space to allow us to think about what's what's next and um i guess part three of that process is where our vulnerabilities were and with covid you know we 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 shored up the balance sheet so we we, we knew we were okay for time we knew we we, we had furlough if yeah. we needed it so so the underlying business was relatively stable but we didn't know what business was there out of the other side of it and what we did know was again the the, the companies the businesses that we were working with um including the large ones it wasn't just the it wasn't just small businesses being scared everyone's like right sure up the balance sheet any any special projects either getting shelved or or paused anything that had to go on 
because people were working from home, what have you, were slowing down. So people were missing milestones. You waited for assets and inputs that you can't hit another billion milestone until you get the inputs that you need to do the work. So every, everything slowed down. And um, so I guess the, the the challenge and the learning from that, again, is, again, how can you protect yourself from, from being a barometer business? And that then leads us into this recurring revenue model that we're trying to achieve now to 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 really you know put those um uh put those fortifications off around the business for 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 what might come next yeah absolutely understand um great if you were sitting here with the uh, knowledge that you have now having a conversation with your 18 year old self what would you say before you go running off building a world-class development team, go and run off and build a world-class sales team. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm still trying to give myself the same piece of advice now as a, as a 49 year old. <laughs> we've, we've always been fantastic operationally and um, we've, uh, we've, we've never put the, uh, the sales structures in place. And it's made, you know, it's one thing that, um we've got a we we've always had a business that we we know well and the dynamics of the business are great because the personalities within the business yep. are, are all you know birds of a feather effectively yeah, yeah. and and so that makes for quite a happy um work environment however um i think if i'm you know being brutally honest about about business structure um you know, obviously clearly we've got those processes in place but we outsource and you know uh, some bits are automated and you know, you're using using maybe maybe more fragmented strategies than you would do and and consequently the 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 results on that side of the business aren't they're fine but they're not as good as the bits that we really focus on by on that internal team building and i think um uh, I, I think from really quite young, I sort of feel like we could draw a good business on paper. Um, but I think if I could have the whole lot over again, I'd be much quicker at getting from the paper exercise to the hard reality of putting those those bombs on seats and putting the right bombs on the right seats quickly. Mm. And I think, you know, I think that's definitely advice I'd, I'd I'd give to myself. Great. Yeah. I think that might be advice that a few people would give to themselves, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and it's but I think it's, you know, it's really easy because you, you know, it, I wasn't much older than 18 when I started doing this. You know, yeah. so, you know it's 20, 20, 21. And um I didn't start a business because I wanted to be a businessman. I started a business yep. because I was good at something that I was passionate about. And it's people. we allowed ourselves to morph and change as you, you know, you see, so you learn, you're learning industries and opportunities are arising and you, you're taking those opportunities and they're taking you off in different pathways. You know, I was, I, I started also was interested in doing his music industry. And then before I knew it, we we did a night we did a night bus flyer for Travel West Midlands. And next thing you know, we're the biggest e-commerce guys in public transport for five years. It's like, you know, so these these things sort of happen yeah. to you. And it's the the sort of learning, learning on the job. And we did get some mentoring and um we were quite fortunate there was there was some free you know sort of free funding about so we we, we settled through the prince's trust so yeah, yeah. there was a network a network around us which was which was great so the you know the financial discipline was all was always there there was you know the accountant was there from the start and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff so we got we got that stuff right but um we we never really had the help with with structure and then you you kind of get yourself into a modality in a way of working that over time becomes in, entrenched and um we got a lot of it right but not all of it yeah okay cool so if you had to wrap all that up in a nice little present and put a bow on top um <laughs> what would be the one piece of advice you'd give to the other business owners watching this just one it's hard isn't it oh. <laughs> Yeah. 
I think I've always felt my best in my business when I've known my governance has been right. Mm -hmm. And all of the exciting stuff around being entrepreneurial and being strategic and, you know, developing a good life work balance and having time to spend time with your staff and, you know, having time to talk to your business partner and all of that. Um, I think all of that happens best with a clear mind. Mm -hmm. And I think the clear mind comes from good governance. So racing to get yourself six months operating costs in the bank, racing yourself to make sure your tax payments are automated, your, your accountancy schedules are all done. And just that real sort of background stuff that creates so much white noise and so much stress. Mm -hmm. um, I think if I package it up, all of it up. So the times when I've been at my best is when that's been at its best. And the times I've been at my worst is when that's been at its worst. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, great answer. Thank you. So your website details are going to be sitting underneath this video for everybody to go and dig around in and find out more about what you do. What would be the best next steps, Carl, in terms of somebody who's interested in finding out more about that? Uh, to talk to talk to us well yeah i mean the website the website gives a, a a reasonable idea of what we do um it's it's always a challenging narrative for us because there's different kinds of businesses that we work with and we work with a lot of different kinds of business challenges and you know sometimes we're talking to marketing people sometimes operational sometimes it and all of that kind of gets lost in the mix um what we actually do is we solve problems and we solve problems digitally and um best next step is is to talk to us what we um most of the work we do is quite complex and um so us getting to quotes and estimates and what have you is it tends to be quite a big process but what we we do like to do and we'll always do as a as a board and as directors is we will we'll give our time and plenty of it just to chew the fat so on what those opportunities might be and what the options might be. And we're always happy to pass that experience on, whether that means you're working with us or not. You know, if um, the amount of people are turned away for e-commerce, when, you know, you don't need bespoke, Shopify will do you fine. Go and spend $79 a month on that. Don't spend 79 grand on me, you know? And so we will give that advice if that advice is, is timely and provide those roadmaps as best as we can. So, um, I guess that's the that's the best way to engage with us is you want an open dialogue and you know a genuine conversation about where you are we'll provide genuine feedback whether that's right for us at the time or not and if you like what you hear and want to work with us great if somebody else needs to hear it tell them and we'll we'll help them instead perfect great answer thank you Carl some great insights today thank you very much for sharing them with us um, yeah, great you. best of luck with the pivot and yeah, um, yeah thanks very much again enjoy the rest much. of the sunshine Cheers.